Hey guys, it's Justin Ledford, and welcome to Generating Leads Like a Pro with Mauricio Cardinal, brought to you by my new book, Federal Construction Contract Simplified. This book comes with an audiobook, and it'll teach you everything you need to know to begin winning government construction contracts while working only 45 minutes a day. You'll be taught the secret weapon that only members in our Federal Construction University Mastermind get access to. It's called our Bidding Opportunities List. This list gives contractors an upper hand advantage and helps them win more government construction contracts quicker because it gives them all the government construction contracts delivered on an Excel spreadsheet so they can bid more deals faster and not have to waste any time searching on all the government websites just to look for a deal to bid. Inside the book, you'll also learn the basics of government construction contracts, but you'll also learn the advanced tactics of how to negotiate with contracting officers and how to protect your construction company that rookie government contractors make when they first get started so you can save your tail from getting caught in the government red tape. For those of you who want extra training, we also have included six bonus classes, which will teach you the ins and outs of government contracts, the different types of jobs that you can win, and how you can be the middleman and make huge profits. We also teach in the training how to find and hunt for the most lucrative deals. And we share with you three case studies of contractors who used our methods and have won over $18 million in government contracts this year alone. This comprehensive book and audio book includes an email that I sent to contracting officers that made me over $20,000. It also includes a construction schedule examples that you can model for your business and explains how you can make wealth by being a part of the new $2 trillion stimulus plan that was approved by our government. This entire book and audio book is available at federalconstructioncontractsimplified.com. My goal is to be your guide to winning government construction contracts because the, here's the deal. I have 8A, HUBZone, and Native American contractors in my network that get awarded hundreds of millions of dollars of government construction contracts every year. And we're looking for teaming contractors throughout America who we can hand these construction deals off to. If you want a tried and true path to create wealth through government construction contracts, consider joining Federal Construction University Mastermind, where you'll get groomed to be one of our teaming contractors. I'll drop a link below for both the book as well as the six free classes. Also, remember to hit that YouTube subscribe button. And with no further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Generating Leads Like a Pro with Mauricio Cardinal. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Real Construction Owners Podcast, where we interview real construction owners and service leaders within our industry. We have a special guest, Mauricio Cardinal with Roofing Marketing Pros. This guy is an expert at generating leads for your company. I know for a fact because I've used him and he generated me hundreds of thousands of dollars in business. Welcome. How you doing, Mauricio? Hey man, just I'm doing awesome, man. Thanks to thanks for having me, and uh, it's been a while. I think uh, first time we met was probably four years ago, right? If I if I correctly, probably four years ago, and I think you met me when we were first getting started. But I'm glad to see how how you guys have progressed over the last years, man. It's been awesome. Yeah, man. You know when we first started, every time a roofing contractor or contractor for that met uh, regard is always kind of hesitant about taking their hard earned dollars. And investing it into marketing where they don't know that they're going to get a return or not. And I was like, I had the same doubts or fears or concerns. But when I met with you and I saw your track record and you showed me your case studies and you introduced me to your past customers, I was like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And it generated me some serious results. Talk to our audience who are contractors, a lot of them roofers, and tell them what they should know about marketing, why they should be marketing. And- and or you know anything that you want to share in this realm. Yeah. So I I kind of I want to give like a breakdown of of like basically the the marketing space. So at the end of the day, I think contractors should be skeptical of uh, of of marketing companies because uh you know if you look at that marketing agency world as a whole, that there's a very low barrier to entry, right? So if there's a low barrier to entry, what that means is that really uh, anybody can start a marketing agency and just start. You know, offering, I'll do your Facebook ads. You know, I'll charge you this, and we'll make these promises, and and uh, you know, maybe it'll deliver them or not. So th that's the first thing. First, they should be skeptical. That's the first thing. Second thing, um, 
uh, you know, they, they've been, uh, they, they, they're really used to more instead of marketing, they're more used to buying from lead brokers, which is, is, a it's a, it's a positive and negative in, in, in itself. So the positives are that, you know, you can, uh, uh, you can get an ROI for sure. I mean, I know a lot of contracts is, Hey, home advisor, but I know a lot of contracts have had success with home advisor a lot. Uh, they hate, they hate Angie's list. They hate all these lead brokers, but at the end of the day, a lot of these guys do get success from, from those platforms. Um, so it's ROI, but thing is that marketing and, and buying leads is not the same thing. That's the first thing you have to understand, you know, uh, are, are you buying leads or are you marketing? That's the thing. So if you're marketing, then you have to understand the difference. That's the first thing, right? And there's nothing wrong with buying leads to grow your business. Uh, I think, uh, if you find a way to kind of, uh, use it effectively for your business, then I, I, I don't, I don't, there's nothing against it in my opinion. Right. So the second thing, right. Uh, the third thing is basically you understand like the products you're buying, right? In terms of of of, uh, of uh, the online space, there's only really main three main products, and not TikTok, which is a kind of the fourth product, but three main products. There's Facebook ads, there's SEO, there's PPC, and there's basically a little bit of a TikTok, which is coming in uh, strong. But those are three main products. So any online agency that you buy from, any agency is going to offer the, a blended solution of those products. So you have to understand the difference, the pros and cons of each product. At the end of the day, here's what I find. I'm going to tell this to you here, to you guys. The highest art return on investment, usually it's it's a combination of SEO and PPC. That's what I, I found the highest ROI. Uh, Facebook ad provides the quickest results. Uh, but long term, what I've seen is a lot of clients, first of all, are not sophisticated enough to have success on Facebook ads. Uh, reason being is because... Uh, they don't have a sales process in place to get leads. The leads are look, overall, if you look at the lead quality between platforms, uh, uh, if Google is the highest, you know, LSA is the highest at like Google ads and, and, uh, and, and local service and organic leads. And then Facebook is really like, depending on, 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 on the type of videos you run and all that stuff, usually a, a little bit lower. So that's kind of like the thing in terms of that. Another thing, basically you have to understand that marketing is, is, is at the end of the day, it's still an investment. You know, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. That's how it is. And, and, uh, any business owner that does had success for me, myself, I've done this for five years. I know not every marketing campaign that I do is going to have success. There's no, there's no hundred percent certainty. The only thing under hundred percent certain is death and taxes. And that's what they'd say. Same thing with marketing, right? It's, it's not hundred percent certain, but if you follow a plan and you execute on the plan and you have a long-term vision, then it should be successful. I love that. That's so true. You know, at, whenever I worked with you. Uh, I was doing Facebook ads. I was successful because a uh, few things. I made good video content. Number two, we followed up right away and we had automation to where if they didn't answer, the homeowner was constantly getting, you know, in contact with. Now, I also had a, biz a success with you doing PPC. I had my biggest claim ever through one of your PPC campaigns. Praise be to the creator and and next, you know, Mauricio is setting it up. Uh, yeah. Uh, but seriously, like we got a hundred and forty thousand dollar tile deal off that uh, from a PPC, and then we also got a massive commercial uh, opportunity off that as well. Nice. Now, regarding um, you know, in terms of budgets, what should contractors put aside realistically to uh, succeed at doing this? Realistically. Uh... This is what most people that I've speak spoke to in this space have recommended, and and it's really it depends on your risk tolerance. But it, I mean, what most people say is what five percent of their their revenue, right? So if it, if you're a million dollar company, you should spend five percent, which is fifty thousand dollars for the year. That's what you should set aside realistically on that. Now, what I recommend, and this is basically uh, coming in as a person that's done this for a while. It's basically like you should not be wasting your last dollar. And I, of course, I've had that happen many times. Like you should not be wasting your last dollar on a, oh, I'm going to hire this person and, and praying that it, that it helps me get leads so I can get to that. You should not be doing that. If you're not in that, if you're not comfortable with, first of all, uh, 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 you know, having the cash, the first thing is having cash or having the, 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 the budget to do this. If you don't have it, then don't do it. Simply don't do it. Do something else that, that can ha actually produce you results with less less of a gamble, you know, less of a gamble, less of a risk. So if you don't have that budget, then 
then do that. The other thing too, like that I, what I did when I started my business is I didn't have cash, right? I, I just took out credit, took out credit, I took out loan. I didn't, not a loan, but credit cards were. So I, I didn't mind going into debt because I was paying that off slowly, but I was still, you know, acquiring customers. So, you know, like a lot of, a lot of contractors have bad credit for some reason and they can't take out a credit card and just put it on the credit card for whatever reason. Cause I know like, Number one expense is basically materials, right? So you have to be aware of that fact. But you know that that's the thing. So that's that's where realistically we should be spending. And you know, if you're like a ten million dollar company, you should be spending a lot, man. A lot of these guys are not even spending a little bit, like at least at least two percent. I mean, two percent is like that's a. What if you look if you do the math? That's that's two hundred dollars. That's like a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars for the year. That's if you're a ten million dollar company, you should be doing that. You know? Yeah. What do you think, Justin? I- uh, personally, I, I'm right there with you, man. Like I'm a firm believer of giving my horses the best feed. What do I mean by that? I, my, my team, my salesmen are like race horses. So I got to feed them. Yes. They go generate their own business. Yes. They create urgency and get people to, you know, sign all the data lines. But at the same time, I feed those guys opportunities. My current budget is 7,000 a month and I'm, that's like $80,000 a year. Yeah. So yeah, I could, or, or more, I could bump that up a little bit. Um, and I do it year round. Yes. It works right best after the storm, but I'm trying to build a brand here. I'm trying to get, you know, recognition in my town and my city and the leads they come through, they're sporadic. Yes. They're best right after the storm, but storm was months ago. And I'm still, I just got a deal, you know, an hour west from here and it's the guy at a $15,000 deductible. We're going to turn that and he couldn't pay that, but he does have decent credit. We're going to turn it into a solar insurance retail deal where it's going to be a roof and solar and it's going to be super lucrative and beneficial for him because he couldn't come up with the 15 grand, but he could come up with the cost of an electricity bill. So I'm right there with you, man. What's your story? Like, how did you get into this? Because when I first met you, I was hesitant. I pulled the trigger. It was beneficial. And then I asked where you're at. You're at 30 clients. And then a year later, 40. And now you're at 100 and plus monthly roofing contractors that are paying to use your service. What is your story? Well, I, I started the company five years ago. My 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 story is I have a background. Uh, I worked for a general contractor in college. I studied civil engineering. So I was going to be in the construction field. I worked for them for a couple of years. Uh, but you know, when I started, when I graduated from college, I didn't, you know, my, I went into sales, I went into a different field, but I, I didn't go into the, I, I didn't go into engineering or construction. I thought, you know, I wanted to do sales because I wanted to learn to eventually become an entrepreneur. And eventually finally, like I, I just, I just, you know, I was in sales for a while and then I, I eventually just saved enough money, enough money, I quit my job and, uh, and I freelanced for a little bit first. And then I, then I started the company in uh, June of 2017. So that was, uh, you know, over, over five years now. And, uh, that, what, that's... what, what masterminds, what masterminds are you in or what great books did you learn or, or did you, have you enjoyed that have made you an expert at your craft? So I, I didn't, so I didn't, like I said, I just mentioned, I don't, I didn't have a marketing background. So all the, all the things that I learned are self-taught. Um, so there's a lot of different books that I, that I, that I learned from, but, um, uh, in terms of the do- different masterminds, I, I, my education started after I, I graduated college. It didn't, it was not in college. My graduate, my, my education started afterwards. So all the, all the things that I learned were from, were self-taught, were people that I, that I invested courses into. Like I, I invested close to, you said, I read your profile. You said, I mean, I read your intro. You said a uh, hundred thousand dollars in, in courses. I invested close to maybe one hundred and fifty thousand in the last five years, or or a hundred. I don't know exact number, but it's a lot, right? Um, and I've invested into marketing, different courses, uh, uh, you know, YouTube, Facebook ads, like all these different courses I've learned from, learned from from people like Russell Brunson. Um, in terms of masterminds, uh, people like uh, today that I'm I'm in, I'm part of a uh, go high level of mastermind. Go high levels like the CRM that we're using for our clients, that we were licensing out to Contract to Link. Contract to Link is a, is a other company that I own. It's basically a licensed version of Go High Level, um, and uh, that that's the the mastermind. Because one of the uh, next steps of our, as our business is how how we turn our business more into a software company, um, and that's like the next step. So that's what mastermind that I'm a part of. 
I'm also going to a conference in, in Costa Rica actually in, in August. It's a uh, for agencies and stuff. So it's another uh, uh, you know another uh, conference that I've been to. But in terms of is that Dan Henry's? Uh, no, not actually. Dan Henry's going to speak in at that conference. What's going to be uh, it's going to be an agency hacker mastermind. So it's going to be JC the height JC height uh company. So it's um. Uh, built a very impressive agency in actually Nicaragua. So, which is a uh, very impressive. So that's awesome. I'm, I'm going to Costa Rica in like three or four weeks for oh, nice. uh, an, un, uh, for a sabbatical, actually. I don't know when I'm coming back. It's going to be awesome. Nice, man. That's awesome. I think, yeah, I think every time there's a, I think, well, uh, well, next three weeks is still going to be a storm area. I think you usually after storms, when did it end? Like in November or like, uh, uh October? well, for me, thank God I have made it to where I'm the owner now and I have operations, sales operations, business operations, growth operations. So I don't go out and do the whole chase in the storm unless it's fresh right after the storm. I'll go get personally 80 to 100 deals myself, touch them, make them feel loved, and then I'll hand them to my team. So I don't act, I have to go out because I do that right after your storm and I do government contracts and I can do that anywhere in the world and make 50 to 100 plus thousand dollars profit on each deal that I land. So nice. I'm not necessarily having to go bump on doors anymore. Uh, so, <clears throat> but I'm curious, what's the best process in your business that you're most proud of? Because you're a successful businessman. Uh, take agency, marketing, all that aside, you're a successful businessman. And there's the questions that I'm about to ask you. If if somebody's opening, open and listening, they're going to be able to pull and extract benefit for their business. What's the best process in your business that you're most proud of? Well, uh, since we are really a, a, a technology company, if you think about it, our our entire like process in terms of uh, onboarding clients is is a completely automated. So uh, all all we have to do is fill out a form, and it and it and it automates the entire onboarding process. So what it does is it creates a a CRM uh, login for them. It creates a software for them. It creates all the landing pages for them. Um, it can even create a website for them uh, if we have to. Um, it sends the emails. It sends them access to the to the RP University. So the, that process, entire process, is automated. Um, that's something we're really proud of. But basically, we we have we, we try to automate every, every instead of hiring you know people to do labor, we try to automate each process. So whatever we think, we, whatever the whatever process there is that we oh we something takes too much work, we just try to find a way to automate it. And we there's different tools that we use, including Zapier, including Integromat, that kind of does that process in place. So that's really the the things that we have, like the, you know, the, the, the most proudest process, basically that, that we built into the company. So basically it allows us to like sell a lot of clients and onboard them really quick. So if a client, you know, signs up, we can literally, if we have to, we can go live the next day. And have everything in place, everything set up. So genius, bro! You you have automation where right when they say yes, they fill out a form and it gets access to you know the CRM, the training, uh, whatever. Like I I need to put that into my process. I, my business is very automated as it is, but there's always holes in every business. Speaking of, what is the hole in your business that you know you need to? spend time on and fix but right right now we are in the the process of of uh of moving uh, uh primarily moving from a from a facebook ads agency to an seo and ppc agency so that's that's like uh what we're going to be focusing on the next 12 months okay so that's like that's what's next for you yeah, yeah, that's what's the next, and also we're gonna be also uh, incorporating more of our of our software into into our sales. Uh, so, for example, we're gonna be selling um, our uh, our software as a standalone product, and we're gonna use that standalone product to market to instead of just roofing companies to all uh, contractors. Um, so we're we're working on creating. Or I've already hired the first person to do that. Uh, I mean, to to actually onboard clients who as a customer service uh, type of person, and that that person is going to be uh, onboarding our clients. But we're going to be using that as a as a tool, as a as an entry point into all contractors and working with more 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 types of businesses instead of just uh, roofers. Man, that's brilliant. That led me right into the next question: How are you scaling your business? Uh, 
Well, we're, we're, I mean, for us, it's a simple math equation. So basically, it's it's a uh, it's a figure out our our number of clients we bring in every month, uh, uh, and then making sure that that number beats the the number of clients that we lose every month. So we have to reduce our churn rate, right, to get it to a certain number, and increase the volume of clients we get, and then that that's how you scale a marketing agency. It's pretty it's pretty simple uh, math. Basically, I, I give you a simple example. If you have a hundred clients, right, you lose ten clients. That's a ten percent churn rate. That's ninety. So you have ninety clients the next month, right? So you, in order to stay at the same rate next month, the pro, you have to either sell ten or sell twenty, um, and that's how you get that number. What? But the, the issue is that once you get to scale of one hundred and fifty clients, that churn rate, like if you example, if you have a, a ninety a ten percent churn rate. Uh, that's you're losing about 15 clients a month, right? So even though a, a, a 5%, you know, a 10% churn rate is not bad in, in the service space, it's like 90% retention rate, um, it's still, you're still losing a lot. Does that make sense? So Absolutely. Like, the number, the, 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 the higher number you get, the more important that number becomes because you're, you're just going to be selling and selling and trying to get that to that number. So that's, that's how you kind of grow a marketing agency. You have to make sure that that churn rate stays low or outsell the churn rate. So that's kind of the thing we have to, to keep in mind. That's pretty, pretty simple. So in terms of reducing the churn rate, that, that comes down to improving the product and improving the service and and also uh, you know also changing the product as well. That's, that's the thing that we're gonna be doing. What would you say is your best secret to growing your business? Um, well, for us, it's, it's, it's about, uh, uh, once we figured out the the funnel, like what I mean by it is a customer acquisition, once we figured out how to acquire customers, then then basically we just have to uh, make sure we do like that's that's a, that was a secret. So once we understood, okay, we we can we can use Facebook ads or use paid advertising to generate leads for our for our salespeople, and then once we figured that number out, then that would be that's a bigger secret. So our two main acquisition channels for us as a company are Facebook for us, for RMP, right? And then Google ads. And then also we do SEO as well. So Facebook ads, the last five years have been the biggest driver for us for like, for like promoting RMP, right? Running for marketing pros to drive B2B leads to our sales team. That's been our biggest driver doing, figuring out that paid advertising. And that's a re average because I know how many appointments we get per month. We get uh, averaging appointment between 150 to 200, 250 dollars of appointment. I know we sell uh, like our, our sales uh, percentage on demos is like between 40 and 50 percent. So if we set on this amount of demos, I know how many we're going to close, and based on that that number, we know our cost cost per acquisition. So I know if I spend this amount of money, I'm going to acquire this amount of customers at a certain rate. Uh, let's switch gears a little bit. As being that you're a businessman. What's a, a an investment that you have made that has surprised you, whether it's in yourself or your business or real estate or crypto? Well, I, I, in terms of like the the biggest investment that I ma has made the biggest impact for me, it's always been like paying somebody, either a mentor or or a business person, whatever you want to call it, that's ahead of me, right? So somebody is ahead of me in, in my, in the business that's similar that, that I am. So I pay for that person's knowledge to, to shortcut my success. That's really what it is. So I pay for that person's knowledge to shortcut my success. And I use that person's knowledge based on his track record, his or her track record. And I use that knowledge to shortcut my success. I can, I can not pay for that and just learn it myself. The thing is that it, that takes a little bit longer time. But or I could just pay somebody who's been there and done that, and that teaches me what what it takes to be successful in that specific realm, right? That's beautifully said because you know ultimately you've seen a lot of different contractors that have used your service and succeeded. What would you say is two to three areas areas of an owner should focus on? Yeah, the number one number one reason why. Uh, well, I think number one people will talk about it is is really financing, having your number your money right. If you don't have your money right, then you're not going to be successful. But the second thing, basically, the number one thing is really just having a good sales process, having a good sales system, um, learning how to 
how to you know you know provide an estimate uh, uh, learning how to do a proposal, being professional with with those sort of things. Like, you know, I, there's a lot of contractors that send proposals without like in an email and never even follow up. Those are the things that 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 I see actually every day that will hurt you with with anything with online leads with any any type of lead generation. So just having a very strong sales process, and I would I would pay you know, or learn it yourself or pay. There's a lot of good coaches out there that can teach you how to be successful in sales. Once you are successful in sales, then any, then your success is going to be uh, much more high, much likelier, much your, your increases of chances of exceeding with any marketing campaign are going to increase exponentially if you have that in place already. So, if you have in place already, you feel like I can hire almost anybody and be successful, right? But if you don't, then it's going to be much harder. That's beautifully said. It. What would you consider yourself a success, or, or better yet, how do you define success? Uh, th there's a lot of different definitions to that, and I think uh, if I consider myself a success, I, I think uh, waking up and being grateful is the number one thing. Um, I'm very grateful that I that I live in the United States and I have nice clean air to breathe and I'm healthy and uh, I have my mind and I don't have uh, any, any any diseases and I have a good family. I, for me that's success, right? But uh you know, there's always a next step that I got to take to that I got to go be some more success. What yeah. you just said is beautiful. Like that is yeah. the truth. You just spoke the truth. People are always thinking about success, the big car, the nice house, you know, the fancy watch, all that stuff's cool. It's nice to have, but success is contentment, gratitude, success is being healthy, having a family that loves you and cares about you and runs up to you and hugs you. That's true success. I really appreciate you, you, you sharing that. And it's, it's funny because are you from America? Yeah, my family is, I was born in the, uh, the U.S. My family is from Nicaragua. Okay, because, you know, when I went to Costa Rica, it really made me interested in moving there because when I walk down the street with my little girls and my wife, like people will be like, may God bless you and your beautiful family. And you don't hear, I personally have never heard that when I'm walking down the street and in, in, where I live in Austin, but that was like a common comment uh, just from strangers. And just saying that, and I was like, wow, this is the the heart of people from the South, from Nicaragua or Costa Rica. Or, I mean, I've even seen just incredible souls from like Philippines and Indonesia, like such good people. Yeah. But that's, I, I divert. That's like me going way off tangent. Um, I appreciate you saying that. Now, if somebody wants to reach out to you, you're you're now at over a hundred plus contractors that pay you monthly to manage their marketing. Why? Because you know what you're doing. I've hired you and generated a lot of business. If somebody wants to reach out to you, why would they want to do business with you? And better yet, how can they reach out to you? Well, the number one reason why somebody would hire us is to provide a return on their investment. Um, so that's the number one reason why, I mean, one of our core values as a company is putting more money into our clients' pockets, right? So how can I put more money into your pocket? Uh, so in essence, like like a, a theoretical example, if you spend, you know, $5,000, you get a, you know, a $20,000 return or whatever that amount is, right? You spend you spend a dollar, you get $2 back. That's really what what my goal is in, in any, any uh, client that hires us, right? So sometimes it takes, there's a timeline for that. There's a timeline, there's a plan to reach that return on the investment, right? So that's really the the angle for us. In terms of how to reach us, I mean, you can uh, just, you reach me at uh, uh, Mauricio, you can email me or or uh, reach our website. You can just put put uh, some of your information on our website, roofingmarketingpros.com, and uh, somebody in our sales team will reach out to you. Or you can just send me an email at Mauricio at roofingmarketingpros.com. Um, or reach me on Facebook uh, at Mauricio Cardinal. You can reach me there. Um, Man, I love it. I love it. We've been we've been friends. We've been connecting for several years now. Yeah. I've seen your success. I appreciate you hopping on this call today, Mauricio. 
Yeah, Thank man, you. Justin, I appreciate I appreciate your success, and I, I'm glad that you guys are doing well. And and I think you guys are you especially have have always been uh, one of the uh, clients that I've enjoyed the most working with, honestly. And uh, and 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 your and your and success were is deserved. So like it's not like you know we just did our we made our job easy at the end of the day. That's what it was. <laughs> nice, nice. Thanks, brother. All right, everybody, thank you for being here and being a growth-minded contractor. Leave me a comment below and let me know the biggest lesson that you learned down below. Remember to hit that YouTube subscribe button. And if you're interested in doubling your revenue and awakening your potential and knocking down incredibly awesome construction projects along the way, I want to invite you personally to join me and the teaming contractors in our mastermind that have what is known as the golden ticket in government construction contracts world. These contractors have 8A, hub zone, and Native American set-aside status, meaning they are given hundreds of millions of dollars in government contracts every year. And we need quality contracts to give those jobs to, no matter if you're in Alaska or Hawaii or New York or Puerto Rico, we have construction opportunities in every state. Your first step is to get started. Go get a copy of my book, Federal Construction Contract Simplified, Dot com. And if you want a more in-depth training, go get your six free classes of the Federal Construction University. Those links will be below, and I hope to see you soon.